You say I make you nervous, a tragedy, I'm a beautiful disaster, a reckoning, you wonder how I got this way. You think I'm someone to be saved, someone to clean up and tame, oh, some things never change, never change, oh. you think I'll what's up everybody welcome back to my channel so a couple that is one of my favorite on bravo is of course Paige and craig and they recently did a interview with elite daily and i want to go over that with you as well as show you some other cute things that came from the photo shoot and just things that they've done so let's get into this and make sure you hit that subscribe button. And then if you'd like to get notified when all of my videos or lives are posted, make sure to hit that bell to all. So the title of this article is, We'll Have What Paige and Craig Are Having, A Dinner Date with Bravo TV's Hottest Power Couple. And I couldn't agree more. Forget gifts, touch, or acts of service, Paige DeSorbo and Craig Conover's ultimate love language might be gossip. And when you comprise reality TV's hottest new power couple, uniting two fan favorite franchises of Bravo, the gossip finds its way to you pretty quickly. People want to tell us things, says Paige, breakout star of Summer House, which follows the rose field parties and hookups of a group of friends in the Hamptons. Dude, this is how it's been my whole life, interjects Craig, an OG cast member of Southern Charm, a doc soap about Southern gently with drama that is anything but gentlemanly. People just confide in me. It's a power position to be in, but you can't abuse it because then people will stop telling you stuff. Which is true. And if you start blabbing everyone's business, then you just look like an asshole too. Not trustworthy, any of that. But that's my opinion. We're at EJ's Lunchnet in Manhattan where Paige lives and Craig spends much of his time when they're not in his home base of Charleston. Debriefing on BravoCon, you could pick up on who was a favorite, Craig says, like his Southern Charm co-star Madison LaCroix, which I love Madison, and some spicy intra-networking mingling which Paige says, I've definitely heard a lot of crossover hookups. You'd think that Travis Kels and Taylor Swift just walked into the dine based on the number of turned heads and brunching Upper East Siders whose tables go silent as they start furiously texting their friends. I'll hear things like, be like, I can't wait to see Craig's facial expression when I tell him, Paige 31 says, my parents' rule is that they tell each other everything, Craig 34 says, and I think it's a good practice to have, and I agree, Craig. You don't need to be a Bravo scholar to want a piece of what Craig and Paige have going on. Their undeniable couple hashtag goals to Gen Z girls who otherwise think such hashtags are cringe. For starters, the pair's prom court good looks are even more apparent in person, where you can see just how wide Craig's dimples stretch and the utterly blinding nature of Paige's smile. Gazing at the couple, one dinner admirer asks, are you real? On Instagram and TikTok, they're goofy lip syncing to clips from the Rugrats and the Beckham doc demonstrates a real sweetness. Proof that it's possible to make couples content that isn't embarrassing. The longer the caption, the shorter the relationship, 
page advises, Empire building isn't easy, but picking the partner to do it with, Craig and Paige suggest should be. At the end of the day, who's the person you want to hang out and talk a little shit with? I love how personable he is, Paige says. He truly can talk to anyone. He just walks in a room, captivates it, and he generally is so nice. Sometimes it's too much. He's too nice. Craig takes, she's really like me for me, and I'm pretty wild and quirky. I struggle with tics and OCD and my routines and don't feel like I have to hide anything from her. It makes my soul so calm. There's not a better feeling than having someone you could be yourself with, and that is so true. So what you like about me is about you, Paige asks. That's so Craig. That's a Craig answer. He had to get me two birthday cards this year because one of them was basically all about him. It was a joke. And I love that they can just joke like that. They know each other so well that it's funny to them and it's cute and it's kind of romantic in the sense that it's always great to laugh with your partner and have those inside jokes. Which it continues with, happy birthday, she says with an eye roll. Here's why I like what you do for me. The timing never seemed to work out for Paige and Craig at first. They met back in 2019 when Craig made a guest appearance on Summer House, but Paige was in a relationship. Two years later, they reunited on the first season of of spin-off series Winter House, but it was Craig who was off the market. They'd each sensed sparks, but buried their crushes. So when Paige got word that Craig had split with his girlfriend after Winter House wrapped filming, she got to scheming. That's my girl. Because I'm a Scorpio and I'm sneaky and manipulative when I need to be, and I knew that he was a little bit more shy and nervous, she says. She planned a trip to Charleston with her brother, his girlfriend, and Summer House co-star Sierra Miller. I texted him and said, oh my God, so crazy. I'm going to be in Charleston. What a small world. We should hang out. So we hung out that first weekend and then kind of just continued to hang out. Listen, guys, when a girl knows what they want, they know what they want. It took a little time to figure out what they were, long distance style. I love that we have done our relationship in this slow, sustainable way that continues to put one foot in front of the other, Craig says. But... Both knew it was something special. I had that moment where I was like, this is either going to be the person I marry or the hardest breakup I'll ever have, Paige says, but I'd rather date him and know. It's like owning a dog, Craig reasons. You're like, do I want to buy it? (laughs) Am I the dog in this scenario, says Paige, channeling, when Harry met Sally, because the dog's going to die, but then you'll miss out on the good years with the dog. Oh, Craigie boy. But he does make a point. If you don't go and try or go get the dog that you are thinking about, how much work it's going to be to have a dog and all the things that you're going to have to do, You'll never have all those moments and special feelings and just all of the love that comes from owning a pet in that scenario, that is, though. (laughs) One of the joys of watching Craig and Paige is the way they fuel each other's growth. They level each other out. She brings out a softness in him, sanding down his early season combativeness. And he brings out an endearing sincerity amid her free-flowing sarcasm. They also level each other up. Craig 
and I have a lot of conversations about our brands, says Paige, who previously juggled fashion writing with work as an executive assistant. I did not realize that. She started thinking about her platform the moment she signed onto Summer House. I wanted people to go to my Instagram and say, oh, I know what she does. She does fashion, hosting, she's gossipy, she can put together an outfit for less. Paige went into the show, she says, hoping to channel some simple life era Paris Hilton. But while she claims to inspire to a life of glamorous luxury, bed is my favorite place, says the woman fans have nicknamed a bed sore sister. Her hustle and unflappability gives her next gen Bethany Frankel vibes. Now that part I don't agree with. I don't think she's anything like Bethany Frankel, though I can see where the sarcasm can compare. But Paige is just someone that is very unique in her own ways, and I love her for everything that she has to offer. I do know some people don't like her sarcasticness or the way she gossips, but she truly means well with everything that she does. Even when she is, say, gossiping, she's not doing it to hurt somebody. She's doing it to, well, let her friends know and then maybe have a conversation that needs to be had. And that's something that I've seen in Summer House and even Winter House, that there were tough conversations that needed to be had with people. Like, for instance, Lindsay and Danielle. And if Paige never went to Lindsay and said, this is what Danielle was saying, or like, I didn't know because this is what Danielle felt, they would have never had that conversation. And look at them now. They're better friends than they were before. And I know the breakup had a lot to do with them getting back together as friends. But it's things like that that I love about Paige. What do you guys think? Let me know down below how you feel about Paige. Bravo really is its own cult, says Paige, who recently made Variety's list of the 40 most powerful women on reality TV. You do get those followers. You do get people stopping you on the street and I just think it's stupid, for a lack of a better word, to not try and build a business and career that's long-lasting after you've been on TV, which I completely agree. In the earlier season of Southern Charm, Craig's brand was that of a flop. His drama-filled me endearing journey to take the bar exam after graduating from law school made him a punching bag among his castmates. This has only made his internal wins sweeter to viewers and I agree. I have been watching Southern Charm since the beginning and it is just great to see how far Craig has come along and they sure did use him as a punching bag after that whole bar exam and graduating from law school thing. Now since launching in 2019, Sewing Down South has sold in places like HSN and Wayfair I do know he's also at Kroger's right now, which we don't have a Kroger's up here, but my parents do have one down there, so I told them they better go get a pillow from Craig. <laughs> but, and with his relationship with Paige, brings him closer to settling down. You get the sense of um, the current season of Southern Charm that some castmates are a little shocked by the Craigazants. <laughs> You're always going to trigger people the more you work on yourself, Craig says. You're not going to dim our light to make someone else comfortable. And that is so true. So when they became the subjects of the gossip themselves, a few of Craig's co-stars, usually in moments of obvious um, alcohol and fumed pettiness have basically accused Paige of cheating on him. 
the couple pay it little mind, which I think that's a great thing. And I know that they were saying it to be petty, but it does not look good. And it could infuriate people. Thank God they understand their relationship enough to know that that's not what's ever happened. It's funny that anyone thinks that we could have an affair, he says. Could you imagine having two boyfriends? The admin page shrieks. You'll see those accusations pop up and I'll be like, Am I having an affair that I forgot about? Craig adds. Paige says, hope he's hot and rich. (laughs) I love their humor. Which, listen, I get this because, well, let's just say here on YouTube, I've been accused of having an affair with another creator. And it just is so baseless and, well, ridiculous, that you can't help but laugh. And even me and my boyfriend joke about it because just what the things that come out of people's mouth, it's like, where the fuck did you get that from? But you have to laugh about it because those are the people that are clueless and maybe unhappy with their life. So if you can't learn to laugh about things like, say, having an affair and people making up lies about that, then you will have struggles in your relationship and maybe some doubts. And I know where I stand with my boyfriend and he knows where he stands. And just like Peg and Craig, we know that's not true. So you kind of got to take it with a grain of salt sometimes and laugh about the stupidity of others. On television, sometimes through tears... Paige and Craig have worked through the questions every long-distance couple has to answer. What city will they live in? When will they get engaged? What about kids? More unspoken, how do their shows fit into all of this? Their relationship marks the first Time two active stars of separate Bravo programs have been in a long-term relationship. Everyone was like, thanks for forcing our hand on this. This is a new chapter of Bravo. Now that we started to date, it's the Marvel's universe, Craig says, of he and Paige's aesthetically becoming friends of, that's Bravo speak for reoccurring guests, on each other's shows. Is there a financial perk to their two show arrangements and thus an incentive to stay long distance? I mean, look, I'm not stupid, honey, Paige says mischievously. We're only together for the money, Craig, deadpans. We've been hiding it for two years. (laughs) Oh, Oh, Craigy boy. Kind of giving those trolls a little run for their money. This one says, in a conversation, at least, the two aren't sweating those big questions, especially when fans are so appreciative of how they set their own timelines. I love when I get a DM from a girl who's 34, not married, doesn't have children, has been dating the same guy for a couple of years, or maybe is even a single. Paige says, it's like, thank you so much because I feel so much pressure from society, my family, and my friends that are married and having kids. But you don't have to do that just because you turned 30. Hmm, I completely agree, Paige, and even here on this YouTube platform, people are so concerned with my relationship, how long I've been dating my boyfriend, which will be eight years in April, and the fact that we're, you know, 36 and we're trying to have babies now. It's like, whose timeline air am I on? My own, not yours. Why are people so concerned about other people's lives? I mean, this is the society we're in now where you're, when you put your personal life out there on social media, people are going to scrutinize everything. But you have to stay true to yourself and remember you're doing your own, not for someone else. 
Now, the couple did consider tying the knot earlier this year while in Las Vegas for BravoCon. I said, let's go do it in a chapel, Paige says. Craig chickened out, though. I'm not going to get married in Vegas, he answers bashfully. I want something more real than that. What's more real than me, you, and Elvis, honey? <laughs> I agree, Paige. No, but I get it, too. And let's say Andy Cohen was kind of pushing it out on them, too. Just a little bit. Anyways, though, Paige doesn't see herself having kids until I'm 36 or 37, she says. I'll do what I want to do when I want to do it. If that means I'm having a baby, then great. I'm going to be so much more well-dressed. Because by Craig's calculations, she'll be on her way to running the world by then. She's a driven person, he says, of his other favorite page qualities. If and when they start a family, she's going to work until she's financially free in her own right and build a company. I can't wait to be a stay-at-home dad. And I can totally see Craig doing that. That will never happen, Paige playfully scolds. If you have time to be a stay-at-home dad, you have time to get a second job. <laughs> Will they graduate to their own spinoff one day? They're not so sure. Even the bigger Bravo celebrities can struggle with the jump from an ensemble cast to their own project, like Jackson, Brittany, Take, Kentucky, anyone? And there are other TV formats that appeal to them. Which, don't get me wrong, I did like the Jackson, Brittany, Take, Kentucky, but it wasn't the best. If Kelly Ripa and Mark Consuelos want to retire, we're here for it. We'll take it over, Paige says. Ripa has long been a career inspiration. I've always wanted to skin her and wear her like last year's Versace. Now, Craig sees the vision too. If Bravo wants to do a morning show, I would love to do it with Paige. After all, what job could be better than gossiping with your best friend? And that is the end of this article. Now, let me know what you think about this article. Let me know what you think about Craig and Paige. Are they one of your favorite Bravo couples? I love that they are the first, like, crossover couple as well. I think they set a good platform for other bravo crossover couples in the future and i'm totally here for it what do you guys think though let me know down below i love getting to comment with you guys and interacting and discussing things now they also did with elite daily what they call test how well they know each other so let's take a look at that video Hi, Elite Daily. I'm Craig Conover. And I'm Paige DeSorbo, and welcome to our photo shoot day. What was my first impression of you? He was the hottest man alive. <laughs> no, I think you were probably like, he's kind of cute and adorable and stupid. Yeah, I thought that you were very loud and like took over the room, and then I ran away. <laughs> what was Craig's first impression of me? It was probably just like, I've never seen someone that classy and elegant and gorgeous and funny and down to earth. I actually didn't think any of those things. <laughs> I just knew that you were my person and I didn't know why at the time. I was like, I'm gonna marry that girl. <laughs> What's one thing I couldn't live without? Soup? Pretty good question, <laughs> super cheese. What could I not live without? Outfits. Okay, well, yeah, like any human, they need to be clothed. <laughs> What's my astrology placement and do you think it fits? You are a scary Scorpio. Yeah. You have black cat energy, what's mine? You're an Aquarius. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know many things about Aquarius, but I know that top. you're very, they're like the best one. No. The things that I read about being an Aquarius tell me that. Sounds like a very Aquarius thing to say, but I do think we're a good astrological fit. Am I named after someone and who? Aldi. 
Your middle name, Aldi. Your mother's maiden name. But my first name. Paige? Yeah. I don't know. I'm named after Nicolette Sheridan, who was a soap opera star. My mom was laying in the hospital bed giving birth to me, and the woman's name on TV was Paige, and that's who I'm named after. And you're named after your dad. His middle name, Craig. What's his first name? William. Oh my god, I never knew that his first name was William. You thought I was a junior? How can you tell when I'm mad? I know this. You take your own trash out. <laughs> and it drives me nuts. If you see me carrying my own suitcase, I'm livid yeah. about something because I don't need a man to do anything for me, so I will That's lift a 200 pound suitcase just to make a point. How do you know if I'm mad? If you're mad, you say you're mad. Like you don't have like signs. Yeah, I communicate. What's my comfort movie? Anything Christmas, like Craig will watch Christmas movies in July and it's, it's not my vibe. A holiday. The Holidays Your Comfort Movie? Okay. I want to know what your comfort um, movie is. I mean, I have my favorite movie. My favorite movie. My favorite movie. My Cousin Vinny. Oh. So I ask you, would you give a f what kind of pants the son of a bitch who shot you was wearing? Who is my celebrity crush? Me. No, my, like, real one. Oh, John Hamm. Yes. If you're listening. Or watch. He's a big fan of the shows. If he's listening, what? <laughs> what was my favorite episode to be a part of, of Southern Charm? I'm asking because I'm genuinely curious for myself. <laughs> the Sewing Down South Christmas party. Oh, yeah, when you're there. Anyone that you're, you're around. How did we do, you think? You got one more for me? I think we did. Yeah, this is my last one. What is my love language? What's it called when you mix them all together? <laughs> Psychotic. Then... I'm a black cat. I like attention and then I like you I'll to say, leave me alone. say, but you look alone. pretty. What's mine? Quality time and physical touch. What's hardest for you to give? Words of affirmation. And that's the couple's quiz from Elite Daily. Well, guys, that's it for Elite Daily's interview with Paige DeSorbo and Craig Conover. I hope you all are having a wonderful holiday with family and friends and just enjoying it. And I cannot wait for the new year. Lots will be happening here on my channel. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. But leave me a comment letting me know what you're doing for the holiday and what you think about this Elite Daily interview with them. Bye, everyone. Have a wonderful holiday. With the pretty on your arm Once you cover up my bruises and battle scars But it always ends the same Can't bear the things I've had to face Got you crying on your knees in pain Oh, some things never change, never change, oh